What's up guys, Larry Chen here. We are at Grid Life Midwest at Gingerman Raceway. And as you guys probably know already, one of the, my favorite things to do here, not only do I shoot the racing, I shoot the drifting, I do my best to kind of walk around and see uh, cars that uh, people bring to show, you know, race cars, drift cars, anything and everything that I can feature for Hoonigan Autofocus. I, I, you guys are gonna say it again, I know, you guys are gonna say it all the time. I'm a big Z guy and Zs always have a special place in my heart. But surprisingly, I haven't featured a Z32 yet on this channel. This really kind of stopped me in my tracks. Uh, Colton is the owner slash builder. Hey. Hi Colton, how are you? Hey. Thanks for bringing your beautiful 300 Absolutely. ZX. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I mean, these cars, actually, I know exactly what to say because you kind of said it best when we first started talking. These are getting more and more rare, right. just in terms of like in the tuner world. Yeah, absolutely. Part of it is because they're really hard to work on and it kind of takes a special person like yourself <laughs> to love it. Um, the first thing, I've done um, injectors on a Z32 one time and that was a long time ago. That was probably over 15 years ago. It took me personally nine hours yeah. to just change the injectors. And I know there's special methods where you like drill out little things or whatever, and maybe you can access it better that way. But it, it's, it's a car that takes a special person to work Absolutely. on and love. And what, what made you want to build a Z32? Um, honestly, just the, the overall sleekness of the body is what really drew me in. Um, it's one of those cars from like the 90s era that I just, I love 90s cars. So the Supras, the NSXs and the RX-7s. Um, and the 300ZX was kind of always the forgotten one. Um, it was a great platform to build on, rather difficult to work on, but uh, they make really good power and they handle really well. So, yeah. Well, cause for a moment there, honestly, it was the fastest out of all the JDM cars, right? Because I believe so, yeah. uh, the, the NA version came out in 1989 and then the turbo came out in 1990. And at the time for a car to have 300 horsepower twin turbo, there was just nothing on the market like it, you know, especially in the US because guess what? The R32 was not available here right. in the US. Um, but this actually had a lot of uh, JDM goodies, JDM bits, I guess, from the R32, including the rear steer, the Hikus. Uh, it's running right now. Do you mind just giving us a couple revs real quick? Yeah, I just sure. wanna hear it. Absolutely. It's so smooth. You know, where, where did Nissan go wrong? Like the, the, the uh, 350Z, sounds terrible yeah <laughs> this sounds so much better than the yeah. 350z the, it sounds so much better than the vq yeah um these cars actually they're kind of difficult to make sound good as well uh fortunately with the twin turbos that helps significantly uh but this car actually has an x pipe on it as opposed to an h pipe which is real common with these cars and i think that's where you get the much different exhaust tone while revving it's a lot smoother almost like an inline uh inline six wow uh do it again i want to hear it from the front There's just so much um, about this car. The, the Z32 has always had a special place in my heart. You know, I, I've always been a Nissan guy. I, I, I try and, I, you know, it's one of those things where I tell people I love every single car, but I started with Nissans and, you know, therefore I just kind of have an attraction to them, especially the Z32. They're just, it's like that halo car of the 90s as colton said but unless you can afford i guess the maintenance on it and uh, keeping up with everything it's quite the feat i mean pretty much almost there's so many things that you have to do engine out services for it Absolutely. just just to change something simple mm -hmm. right you have to be very dedicated yeah to, uh, want. So do you do all the work on it yourself um i've done a lot of the work 
Uh, actually, Z1 did a lot of the engine work. So uh, the motor, the heads, all that stuff was done at Z1 Motorsports. Um, and then the exterior, I did uh, most of the aero package. It's a twin Z design aero kit from Peru, uh, which was purchased through Z1 as well. Um, so it's just something a little bit different, something you don't see very often on the Zs over here in the States. So I've never actually seen this kit. Uh, how many of these kits actually exist? I'm not entirely sure. I do know that you can still purchase them through Z1. Um, they do still make them and Twin Z is actively, uh, you know, um, improving their uh, aero selection as well. I mean, they keep on building more and more parts for the cars, so. So why is it that they're so popular in Peru? Uh, that's just where they're based from. Okay. That's, that's where they uh, design the kits and manufacture them. And so the, originally the car, in terms of design, I feel like was so ahead of its time, but it, it does have that 90s vibe. Mm -hmm. And with this kit, it's updated it so much just to look even to the point where they came like it, it includes this piece for the gas cap i think that is so cool and just the way that it so is this part of the kit yep okay so that way it kind of continues the body line without yeah. interrupting it i love that i really uh i like the wide body kit that they offered for the simple fact that it allows you to run a wider more aggressive tire and offset, but it didn't flare the fenders way out. It don't give it that dually effect that you see on some of the wide body kits available out there. Yeah, because essentially this car is pretty wide already. Right. Um, but but uh, did you go wider on tires or wheels? Yeah, so it's actually, um, they're 18 by 10 and a half, and it's a squared 275 setup, front and rear. Um, and I need more tire in the rear, but for right now, this will have to do. I have plenty of room, so. Right. What, what about the front bumper? So this is a Twin Z design bumper as well uh, with the uh, intercooler ducts and scoops along with the nose panel and the hood. Um, See, this is kind of a thing that's, that's really tough um, for me when I see a lot of the previous designed, uh, I guess the, the cover panel here. It just, most of them just don't sit right with me. You know, a lot of them have like grills. Yep. And, and in my eyes, it looks way better if it's stock, but this actually really complements the, the front end. I mean, the, the, the Z32 front is, it's, it's so timeless, even to the point where uh, Lamborghini used these, mm -hmm. you know, for the Diablo. And also they use them for the R390. Nissan used yep. it for the R390. So. In terms of design, you know, you don't want to interrupt this beauty. Uh, and the hood is, is theirs too? Yes. Yep. Every uh, aftermarket exterior piece on the car is... The paint is so good too. It, it's like OEM. It's, <laughs> it's really, really good. I hours into the paint correction. Luckily, uh, my good friend is excellent with buffing and wet sanding and stuff like that. So we were able to bring the paint to life and... Uh, yeah, it's difficult with a black car, especially with a lot of fiberglass bits on it. You know, fiberglass never sits quite like metal does. You get the waves in it and stuff like that. So we did our best to get it as uh, straight as possible and as good as we could. Essentially, this is just a giant mirror. Uh, can we take a look at the uh, under the engine? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you don't even need to pop it anymore? Nope. Oh. All right, so it's... Uh, VG30DTT, right? Correct. Um, is it still three liter? It is. Um, it is bored, but it's still a three liter. Um, it's built bottom end by Z1 Motorsports. Uh, built heads, Z1 cams, uh, basically all the goodies. It has a Garrett GTX uh, 2867 RSs. Um, yeah, pretty much whatever you can buy for the Z is essentially <laughs> in this bay. Um, so I, I asked you this before, but w w we started rolling, but what are these things? They look like wood. Yeah, so it's actually a phenolic uh, isolator blocks for the fuel rails. The idea is essentially just not to transfer the heat from the engine to the fuel rails, an attempt to keep the fuel as cool as possible. Um, that's just part of the, the top feed kit that you get. So what made you want to keep this motor versus swapping in an RV or something? Or a... um, I mean, 
in all honesty, they make fantastic power. Uh, they can hold up to a lot of abuse. There's a lot of aftermarket support for them. Um, I, I didn't really see a reason to swap it. In all honesty, if it was to let loose at this point, I probably would do an RB26, some of that nature, just to kind of set it apart even more. Um, but yeah, the, the VG is a good engine. Uh, and have you had a chance to dyno this? Uh, well, the last time it was on the dyno, it made 640 to the tire on 93 octane. Um, it's on a bit more boost now, and I have not dynoed it since then, but should be somewhere in the upper sixes, mid sixes, something. Yeah, the, the, you definitely need more tire, sir. Yes, yes I do. <laughs> it uh, absolutely needs more tire. That, that is that is insane. That is so much power for this thing. Um, it's It's more than double from the factory yeah and from the factory i feel like it was already a little bit hairy yeah they were uh you know i had a red one before well not before this um but a few cars ago i had a red twin turbo model as well and that car was all original really low miles and that's kind of what got me started on the z craze i actually sold that to buy an evo 9 and then i sold the evo 9 to buy this so it's kind of going back and forth there I just, I love the Z chassis. What year is this one? This is a 91. Okay, all right. Um, tell me about the brakes. So those are uh, 370Z brakes with the Z1 uh, two-piece rotors with the billet hats, front and rear. Mm. It's funny because every single Nissan uh, takes these brakes and puts them on, you know, like this is like, the, the, they, they they basically bastardize this car and take all the parts from this car to improve other Nissans. Yep. And then now you're taking uh, uh, brakes based essentially from a newer yep, car. from a newer Z. To put it on here. Let's see, what about the rear? Tell me about the exhaust. Um, so this is actually a custom exhaust. Um, it's dual three inch with a custom uh, X-pipe with uh, dual billet mufflers in that as well. Um, it's Z1, full three inch all the way up to the turbos as well. Surprisingly, it's actually not that loud. Yeah, it's pretty mellow. It's a little little drony here and there sometimes when you're out in the road, but short of that, I really enjoy the sound of the car. And are these the Japanese tail lights? So yes, they are originally the J-Spec tail lamps that I had purchased. What I actually did was I separated the Japanese tail light because they have this uh, cool lens with the uh, pinstripes in them. Mm -hmm. And then what I did was I did the all clear lenses behind it and then resealed them back up just to give it a little bit different, yeah. more unique look. Huh. And because the Japanese one, doesn't this light up too? Uh, no, actually it does not. That is the factory Japanese. Oh, okay. All right. The difference is, is the, the lettering is red. Can we take a look at the interior? Can you go on that side? Yeah. The interior on this is Flawless, sir. Thank you. Oh my God. It smells like Japan in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what have you done in the interior? The, um, is yes. that just a shift knob? Or? Uh, yes, it's a Z1 uh, full shift package, essentially. It's their short throw shift kit with a Z-speed uh, shifter housing and everything. Um, but as far as the extension goes, that's just a shift knob. Um, Recaro seats, uh, suede interior bits. Did you have to redo this or is it stock? Uh, no, actually it's tweed from the factory. So yeah, the, the suede has all been redone. Um, and why do you have a master switch here? Um, I've just kind of installed them on all my cars. It's a good safety, safety bit to have. Um, I like it being in the interior because it's easy to get to in case if something happens. I mean, it is a Z after all, you never know. <laughs> That's why you have a fire extinguisher. You also have a fire extinguisher, yep. Uh, do you take this to, to the track or drag strip? Um, no, actually, I just honestly finished this car up not too long ago. Um, and then I finished it up late last year. And then with everything going on the beginning of this year, this is really the first I've gotten it out short of just cruising around to some car meets. It's so good. All of this, uh, does Z1 make all of this stuff, like the pods? And uh, no, actually, I made um, both of the pods. Uh -huh. uh, it's just a custom setup that I did. I didn't really like gauges up on the A-pillar. They have a few different options, but with the double din setup, you're really limited. Um, so I just kind of wanted to keep everything in like the cockpit view. Yeah, that, that's really my favorite part about this car is, it, it, you know, it has that fighter pilot 
yeah, or, or like airplane um, uh, feel to it because everything's kind of uh, towards you. Basically yeah, it's like you. focused on the yeah, driver. Yeah, I love that. And cool. Seats look great too. Thanks. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, overall, it's just a clean build. Thank you. I've seen so many of these builds, but I have to say, you really went all out on this. It's very, very clean and it's very well done. And in black, no less. I think that is the worst. That's the it hardest is. color to make really clean, you know, it essentially really because is. you could see every little scratch, every little ding. Um, I love it so much. Really good job. Can we go for a ride outside? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. I want to. I want to feel this thing. I don't want to get your carpet dirty. It's so clean in here. So um, I have a fun 300ZX story. I um, before Nissan moved to Tennessee, I had a chance to check out the, uh, the their dream garage. Okay. Where it, it's all essentially new cars from Nissan that they just stored away to kind of keep as time capsules. And one of the cars was a Z32. Oh, nice. That had 50 miles on it. Wow. And uh, it w it, it's been sitting there for so long, we couldn't even open the hatch because the rubber basically melted or, or it sealed itself to the hatch. So <laughs> I'm looking at this thing. And then on top of that, it's funny, the trip odometer for some reason it had like 15 miles on it. I'm thinking like, yeah, that, that would be the biggest dick move is for me to just reset that. <laughs> um, because, I, I mean, it, essentially, yeah, cars need to be driven. Absolutely. But it's kind of cool to see an uh, example of a car like that in, in just plastic wrapped. It smells like a new car still. I like your background. Oh, thank you. Oh, man. That clutch is pretty aggressive, huh? Yeah, it's a uh, triple disc, uh, triple, it's a Carbonetics, triple carbon clutch. How so. do you even drive this on the street? It's actually pretty user friendly. It's, uh, I really, I've actually been spoiled now by the triple disc. I really enjoy it. There's, um, it's just the way that the pedal travel changes as you get heat in it, really catches you off guard sometimes. <laughs> One second when the clutch is cold, you have like no travel. And then when the clutch is real warm, you have a ton of travel and it's just, sometimes it catches you off guard. What um, suspension is in it? This is on um, Powertrix coilovers. Okay. Uh, and then it has all the uh, adjustable, all the adjustable arms from Z1. Um, yeah, pretty much everything's adjustable throughout the suspension. So what do you think about the new 300ZX, essentially? Yeah, they, they're going to call it whatever whatever it is, Z, 400Z. Yeah. But I, it's a 3-liter and it's twin-turbo or single-turbo, who knows? Yeah. We don't know yet. Um, essentially, it is a 300ZX. I really like it. I think the car is going to have a lot of potential. Uh, there's obviously a few things that I would personally change on it as far as appearance goes, but... I'm and sure. that's the beauty of it. Yeah. That's the beauty of it is you can change it. And I'm, that's what people don't understand a lot of times. Or, or a lot of people complaining maybe don't have the mentality, the mindset that you do. You want to make it your own. Absolutely. You know, and, and there's so much potential there, especially because it's a modern car with a modern power plant, modern chassis. Mm -hmm. I think it'll complement something like this very well. Yeah. Right is really bad because it's construction. Oh my god. This is too much power. Yeah. <laughs> you just blow the tires off any in in any gear it seems like. I mean especially on these roads a little damp, but it sounds great. Thank you. Wait, so does this still have Hikus then? No, it does okay. not. Once you uh, once you start getting into higher power and you start losing traction at higher speeds, Hikus can be a bit on the sketchy side. <laughs> so it's pretty common to delete them once you start making yeah. a fair amount of power. Oh. Wow, this thing is incredible. I like all the gauges and everything. It, 
rides nicely too. It rides really good. It's not too overly harsh. So this still runs on pump gas, huh? Yes, currently it's still on 93 octane. Huh. It's amazing how much power this thing can make, really. Yeah, I, uh, uh, Anti-Lag Racing is the uh, guys that did the tuning work on the car, and uh, thoroughly impressed in how it performs on 93. Um, it does have a Haltech ECU, so I have the ability to use a flex fuel sensor and do E85. Um, I just haven't really got around to it. I've been enjoying it on 93, so. But, you know, how is it that like there's no check engine lights and everything? Like everything seems to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, that's the benefit of a standalone ECU. Um, but yeah, overall, just a street car. That's really what I built it for. What? You want to see if third hurts? Sure. No. Nope. No way. I mean, maybe not even fourth. Yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> once it gets into boost, it just, it blows the tires off. Oh my God. That's unusable. Like, it's too much power. I mean, that's pretty cool. I guess that's the point of it. <laughs> You know, on dry pavement, well, I mean, it's relatively dry, but it, usually once you brush off the tires in second or something, third tends to hook really well. I'd honestly be curious to see how this would do on a drag strip. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with some stickier tires, I feel like it would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it would move pretty well, I'd imagine. Oh, this thing is just insane. It just comes out so easily. Really, really great build. Thanks for showing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate the opportunity. It's me in cartoon form. Just wanted to give it to you. Great. I appreciate Thank you so it. much Thank you. for showing us your beautiful build. It's these cars that I love. I love them so much because it's one of those things where we literally just featured a tube chassis CRX and now we're featuring like a street build. Very very clean very very beautiful and it's it's like modernized i love that so thank you guys so much for watching if you guys want peaker stickers and hoonigan auto Focus stickers definitely make sure to check out my etsy store it's etsy.com slash shop slash larry chen photo every single poster comes with those stickers thank you guys for the support